have the bridge coming up, so uh, stay seated outside. Thank you. And we have a few uh, national uh, naval heroes buried in there, among others, one what that we call Tordenskjold, mm -hmm. who is born in Norway. But <laughs> Norway was Danish back then, so. <laughs> Uh, the building we have on the right hand side, uh, hiding behind the scaffolders, is the old stock exchange, and that was also made on the Christian the Fourth. And yeah, so Christian the Fourth, uh, when he was living, he was really ashamed of his city and of the, his castle. That was a Copenhagen castle. Uh, it was an old medieval city, and he thought maybe if I build something of a new Renaissance style, a Dutch Renaissance style here, I will get the people convinced that this is a very beautiful new city. And uh, then they pay taxes to get into the city, and then it's too late when they have more the boat. And that's exactly what the, this building was made for. It was uh, the f uh, first covered market with goods from all over the world. On our left hand, left hand side, we have the National Bank, designed by Arne Jacobsen, who is famous for some of the icons of the Danish design, the chairs, the swan, the egg, and the ant. And he designed everything down to the cutlery for this building that he never got to see built finished because he died seven years before the ending of the construction. Then we have one more bridge and we have a little bit of space in between our bridges here. The three buildings we have on the right hand side here, side here are where we have part of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The big sign uh, on the, in front of it tells us that uh, you can read the world best news. So basically, it means that it is possible to read some news without getting depressed. And uh, in front of us, on the right-hand side here, we have Eichville's warehouse. Uh, the building that is also from the mid-1700s here is uh, known for uh, having a very different backside than uh, the two sides you're seeing now and uh, a lot of the big press uh, conferences during uh, the lockdown they happen from here there's a little black sculpture in front that is called freedom and this is a gift we got from the virgin islands so in the virgin islands there are three old danish uh, colonies that we used to call our west indies colonies they had to look nice but there was no reason to spend money on the backside let's be practical right on our left hand side here, the green building is an old custom house and an old ferry terminal. And uh, that was where you could get the ferries to Sweden until we got the Ursons Bridge in 2000. There's been many, many things in there. And right now there is an, ex an exclusive club that has moved in there, the Soho House. And there's been a little bit of um, uh, controversy, controversies with all the tables you're seeing outside there because uh, Soho House didn't want people to sit at those uh, tables unless they were a member which is about cost you about a uh, thousand uh, euros a little bit more per year but in Denmark we have this rule that if you're using the public space everybody anybody should be able to uh, be there so now everybody can sit uh, out there and uh, if you uh, want to go inside then you need to pay a thousand euros plus whatever you're consuming on the right hand side here we have some old social housing and they also actually uh, kind of uh, had a similar controversy because there used to be a gate here closing the access to the uh, path here by the harbor and we have this rule saying that you all the uh, waterfront should be accessible to anyone so finally uh, they had to take this gate away actually this summer the area we have here on your right is called Koyas Ples. The apartments are extremely expensive, but anyone can sit and enjoy the harbor here with the, the heavy music and everything. So that's get every, that gets everybody to meet each other. And then we have the Inner Harbor Bridge here. And after the Inner Harbor Bridge to the left, you will have a little peek to the postcard of Copenhagen the canal of Nyhavn, my heaven, with all the pretty colored houses there. So and nice. uh, this, this really canal nice. celebrated 350 years anniversary this summer. And there's a lot of restaurants here and good places to have 
someone Something ice cream too. <laughs> And in front of us on the left hand side, we have Skuspilhuksu, the Playhouse, which is the newest part of the Royal Theatre, a building designed by the Danish architect Lund Gordon Tranberg, and that opened in February 2008. It has some very nice lighting also in the foyer here, uh, with some fiber optic lamps hanging from the ceiling that looks uh, really like a lot of sky, uh, a lot of, sorry, sorry, a lot of stars uh, in the sky. Uh, if you look at it when it's dark. The building opened with Shakespeare's Hamlet, known for to be or not to be, and also, but then you know what you're heading for. And uh, that park was supposed to open this summer, but they are still working on it. The opera has a few very nice musical details. One of them is that uh, the, there is a big heart uh, covered with uh, lacquered maple wood that is made around the biggest uh, auditorium in there and the wood has been treated as it would have been to build string instruments which is of course a symbol of love for music another musical detail is that if you go and knock on the stones of the facade they actually sound like different uh, bells uh, and you don't have to have consumed anything weird to have that sound, I promise you. Uh, and uh, that means that the chimes that were recorded to call people in when uh, something is starting, uh, an event, uh, an opera for example, is starting, they are actually recorded with people that have been knocking on the uh, wall. In there we have three beautiful round chandeliers. They are designed by an artist called Olafur Eliasson. And if you concentrate a little bit and you see those three yellow dots and you look at the wood in the back, it looks a little bit like you have a red background and three yellow dots, which uh, remind you of the symbol of Christiania, that free town that is very controversial right now. You know that camels can be called desert sheep, right? So that's where we do. Yeah, <laughs> my, my level is very good. To the place you can uh, rent yourself into to have a party if uh, you have some event managers in the group it is possible and you it's quite funny because you get to pass by where they press the code and you get to see a lot of uh, ammunition linked around but you get to go in and get yourself hammered with other people there that's the way uh, we are we believe in each other here in this very honest country the green area here on the right is called Battery Sixtus and uh, we actually use some of those candles here. Yeah, people started to use it for a lot of creative endeavors. We have the street for the left that just closed here for the winter and uh, many festivals, among others the most peaceful music festival of Denmark, the one with less problem with the uh, police. It's very polluted so you can't really uh, use the ground there and apparently that could be one of the reasons why he decided that this roof should be accessible and you have ski slopes there uh, where you can ski the whole year you have a trekking path that anyone can use it takes you 15 minutes to walk up and you have also an elevator which makes it completely easy and free to get up to the, the top almost and a climbing wall and you get to see all the way uh, over Copenhagen and the suburbs and our old territories, the southern part of Sweden. On our right hand side here we have the building with the blue eyes, which is the headquarters. We got the, the warehouses where they would keep the paper for the editing industry, newspapers and magazines in Copenhagen. A whole new neighborhood is growing there designed by the Kova architect, they are also responsible for what's happening with the Opera Park and we're going to have a new water culture center here where you can see those metal structure, structures and this uh, water culture center is designed by a Japanese architect. The most expensive apartment has been sold up there uh, this summer for 70 millions of Danish workers. So we are now going to sail into Christian's Harbor, Christian's Harbor. and uh, Christian's Harbor was made under the reign of Christian IV uh, for celebrating 400 years anniversary five years ago or so. And Christian IV, he uh, was a king 
that uh, was very creative. He built a lot of things in the city, the Rosenborg Castle, the Round Tower, and a few things we passed by also. He also partied very, very hard when he got crowned. That was a party for about two, two weeks or so. And the wine was flowing out of the fountains of the city and so on. He made 23 children that he assumed. And he started a few wars that didn't end very well for us. So he needed money. And he thought, saw that there was a lot of rich merchants in the, uh, the Netherlands. And he thought, well, maybe if I build something similar to Amsterdam, I'll get all those rich merchants to move in here. And then they can, can pay taxes and money, money, money. Must be funny, right? And uh, they were not interested. So uh, the king tried with other German rich uh, merchants and Danish he managed to start uh, to get the project started when people got the pieces of land for free and years without paying taxes. Today it's a quite gentrified area with a lot of houseboats and sailboats and actually an area where I have to keep quiet most of the time to uh, not bother the people around here. And uh, if you get a little bit jealous, let me just remember that all this was built using all the trash from the city to dry the grounds up. So I need you to sit down because we have a bridge coming up. Also you on the phone map, please. Thank you. The beautiful tower we're going to see over the roofs on the left is the Tower of All Saviors Church. You'll see it even more after the second bridge here. Yeah.